Unfortunately, there are far too many vintage cars idling around in museums. We decided to liberate this Adler Torpedo from its home at the German Car Museum in Amagang and let it show what it does best, driving in style. Time to open the fuel cock. And start with the engine with a hefty turn of the crank. And the Adler duly rolls back the decades, belying its age of 96. Our little torpedo was born in Frankfurt in 1914, shortly before the outbreak of the First World War. Adler was one of the biggest car makers in Germany at the time. It had a workforce of 7,000, producing some 3,000 cars a year, in addition to bicycles and typewriters. There were a total of 55,000 cars on German roads back then, and one in five was an Adler. Cars were still very much a luxury item in the early 20th century. Owners were either extremely rich or die-hard technophiles. Our Adler marked a turning point. Advanced technical features with a robust and dependable construction were a winning combination for customers looking for a practical and quick means of transportation rather than a sophisticated toy. The pioneering technology provided the foundations for the boom in popularity for both the Adler brand and for cars in general. Our sporty two-seater was also available with the seats behind each other, resulting in better aerodynamics and the thick wooden steering wheel is still a pleasure to grasp. The internal three-speed gate shift transmission requires a confident driver, while the leather seats are as comfy as can be. You can still find rear axles with leaf suspension in modern cars, although the folding roof construction would be considered rather rudimentary today. The four-cylinder inline engine with a block construction and a 1.3 liters of displacement delivers a modest 13 horsepower. One advanced feature for the time was the extremely driver-friendly circulation lubrication. The ignition timing was automatic, which was revolutionary by 1914 standards. Adler still has a handy and rather cute bulb hooter. The practical luggage rack behind the seat rest also has a respectable size in comparison with contemporary two-seater roadsters. All in all, the Adler is a joy to drive. The layout is remarkably similar to that of modern cars, except that in most countries, the steering wheel is now on the left. But unlike today's right-hand drive cars, the gear select was located to the right of the steering wheel. The lack of synchronization requires delicate double declutching. The brake pedal seems alarmingly ineffective, although the top speed of 55 kilometers an hour is hardly perilous. Some models made it up to 115, which given the state of roads back then, that must have meant a bumpy ride. Depending on the various features on board, the Adler cost some three and a half thousand marks in those days, around two and a half times the average yearly salary. Today, this car is like a time machine. The wind acts as a coolant for man and machine alike, and every single kilometer is a joy and an honor to drive. <laughs>